Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection. Who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Lord God has given me a well-trained tongue that I might know how to speak to the weary, a word that will rouse them. Morning after morning, he opens my ear that I may hear. And I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who pluck my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. The Lord God is my help, therefore I am not disgraced. I have set my face like flint, knowing that I shall not be put to shame. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Christ Jesus, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God something to be grasped. Rather, he emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, coming in human likeness. And found in human appearance, he humbled himself, becoming obedient to the point of death, even death on a cross. Because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed on him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend of those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. The word of the Lord. of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. The Passover and the Feast of Unleavened Bread were to take place in two days' time. So the chief priests and the scribes were seeking a way to arrest him by treachery and put him to death. They said, Not during the festival, for fear there may be a riot among them. When he was in Bethany reclining at a table in the house of Simon the leper, A woman came with an alabaster jar of perfumed oil, costly, genuine spikenard. She broke the alabaster jar and poured it on his head. There were some who were indignant. Why was there this waste of perfumed oil? It could have been sold for more than 300 days' wages and the money given to the poor. They were infuriated with her. Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you make trouble for her? She has done a good thing for me. The poor you always have with you, and whenever you wish, you can do good to them. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She has anticipated anointing my body for for burial. Amen, I say to you, wherever the gospel is proclaimed to the whole world, What she has done will be told in memory of her. Then Judas Iscariot, one of the twelve, went off to the chief priest to hand him over to them. When they heard him, they they were pleased and promised to pay him money. Then he looked for an opportunity to hand him over. On the first day of unleavened bread, when they sacrificed the Passover lamb, his disciples said to him, Where do you want us to go and prepare for you to eat the Passover? He sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the city and a man will meet you carrying a jar of water. Follow him. Wherever he enters, he said to the master of the house, The teacher says, Where is my guest room where I may eat the Passover with my disciples? Then he will show you a large upper room furnished and ready, make the preparations for us there. 
The disciples then went off, entered the city, and found it just as he had told them, and they prepared the Passover. When it was evening, he came with the twelve, and as they reclined at table and were eating, Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, one of you will betray me, one who is eating with me. They began to be distressed and say to him, one by one, Surely it is not I. He said to them, One of the twelve, the one who dips with me into the dish, for the Son of Man indeed goes as it is written of him, but woe to that man by whom the Son of Man is betrayed. It would be better for that man if he had never been born. While they were eating, he took the bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them, and said, Take it, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them, and they all drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which will be shed for many. Amen, I say to you, I shall not drink again the fruit of the vine until the day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. Then, after singing a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. Then Jesus said to them, All of you will have your faith shaken, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd, and the sheep will be dispersed. But after I have been raised up, I shall go before you to Galilee. Peter said to him, Even though all should have their faith shaken, mine will not be. Then Jesus said to him, Amen, I say to you, this very night before the car crows twice, you will deny me three times. But he vehemently replied, Even though I should have to die with you, I will not deny you. And they all spoke similarly. Then they came to a place named Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter, James, and John, and began to be troubled and distressed. Then he said to them, My soul is sorrowful even to death. Remain here and keep watch. He advanced a little and fell to the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass him by. He said, Ah, but Father, all things are possible to you. Take this cup away from me, but not what I will, but what you will. When he returned, he found them asleep. He said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep watch for one hour? Watch and pray that you may not undergo the test. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. Withdrawing again, he prayed, saying the same thing. Then he returned once more and found them asleep, for they could not keep their eyes open and did not know what to answer him. He returned a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? It is enough. The hour has come. Behold, the Son of Man is to be handed over to sinners. Get up, let us go. See, my betrayer is at hand. Then, while he was speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, accompanied by a crowd with swords and clubs, who had come from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. His betrayer had arranged a signal with them, saying, The man I shall kiss is the one. Arrest him and lead him away securely. He came and immediately went over to him and said, Rabbi. And he kissed him. At this they laid hands on him and arrested him. One of the bystanders drew his sword, struck the high priest's servant, and cut off his ear. Jesus said to them in reply, Have you come out against a robber with the swords and clubs to seize me? Day after day I was with you teaching in the temple area, yet you did not arrest me, but that the scriptures may be fulfilled. And they all left him and fled. Now a young man followed him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth about his body. They seized him, but he left the cloth behind and ran off naked. They led Jesus away to the high priest and all the chief priests and elders, and the scribes came together. Peter followed him at a distance into the high priest's courtyard and was seated with the guard, warming himself at the fire. 
The chief priests and the entire Sanhedrin kept trying to obtain testimony against Jesus in order to put him to death, but they found none. Many gave false witness against him, but their testimony did not agree. Some took the stand and testified falsely against him, alleging, We heard him say, I will destroy this temple made with hands, and within three days I will build another not made with hands. Even so, their testimony did not agree. The high priest rose before the assembly and questioned Jesus, saying, Have you no answer? What are these men testifying against you? But he was silent and answered nothing. Again the high priest asked him and said to him, Are you the Christ, the Son of the Blessed One? Then Jesus answered, I am, and you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming with clouds of heaven. At that the high priest tore his garments and said, What further need have we of witnesses? You have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? They all condemned him as deserving to die. Some began to spit on him. They blindfolded him and struck him and said, Prophesy. And the guards greeted him with blows. While Peter was below in the courtyard, one of the high priest's maids came along. Seeing Peter warming himself, she looked intently at him and said, You too were a Nazarene, Jesus. But he denied it, saying, I neither know nor understand what you are talking about. So he went out into the outer courtyard. Then the cock crowed. The maid saw him and began again to to say to the bystanders, This man is one of them. Once again he denied it. A little later the bystander said to Peter once more, He began to curse and to swear. I do not know this man about whom you are talking. And immediately a cock crowed a second time. Then Peter remembered the word that Jesus said to him, Before the cock crows twice, you will deny me three times. He broke down and wept. As soon as morning came, the chief priests and the elders and the scribes, that is, the whole Sanhedrin, held a council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate questioned him. Are you the king of the Jews? He said to him in reply. You say so. The chief priests accused him of many things. Again, Pilate questioned him. Have you no answer? See how many things they accuse you of. Jesus gave him no further answer, so that Pilate was amazed. Now, on the occasion of the feast, he used to release to them one prisoner whom they requested. A man called Barabbas was in prison, along with the rebels who had committed murder in a rebellion. The crowd came forward and began to ask for him to do for them as he was accustomed. Pilate answered, Do you want me to release to you the king of the Jews? For he knew that it was out of envy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate said to them in reply, Then what do you want me to do with the man you call the king of the Jews? They shouted again, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Why? What evil has he done? They only shouted the louder, Crucify him. So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas to them, and after he had Jesus scourged, handed him over to be crucified. The soldiers led him away inside the palace, that is, the praetorium, and assembled the whole cohort. They clothed him in purple, and weaving a crown of thorns, placed it on him. They began to salute him with, Hail, King of the Jews! and kept striking his head with a reed and spitting upon him. They knelt before him in homage, and when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the purple cloak, dressed him in his own clothes, and led him out to be crucified. They pressed into service a a passerby, Simon a Cyrenian, 
who was coming in from the country, the father of Alexander and Rufus. He carried his cross. They brought him to the place of Golgotha, which is translated place of the skull. They gave him wine drugged with myrrh, but he did not take it. Then they crucified him and divided his garments by casting lots for them to see what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription on the charge against him read, The King of the Jews. With him, they crucified two revolutionaries, one on his right and one on his left. Those passing by him, those passing by reviled him, shaking their head and saying, Aha, you would destroy the temple and rebuild it in three days. Save yourself by coming down from the cross. Likewise, the chief priests and the scribes mocked him among themselves and said, He saved others. He cannot save himself. Let the Christ, the King of Israel, come down now from the cross that we may see and believe. Those who were crucified with him also kept abusing him. At noon, darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. And at three o'clock, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lema sabakitani, which is translated, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Some of the bystanders who heard it said, Look, he is calling Elisha. One of them ran, soaked a sponge with wine, put it on a reed to give it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let us see if Elisha comes to take him down. Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last. The veil of the sanctuary was torn in two from top to bottom. When the centurion who stood facing him saw how he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was the Son of God. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of the younger, James and of Joseph, and Salome. These women had followed him when he, had, when he was in Galilee and ministered to him. There were also many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. <clears throat> when it was already evening, since it was the day of preparation, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a distinguished member of the council who was himself awaiting the kingdom of God, came and courageously went to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Pilate was amazed that he was already dead. He summoned the centurion and asked him if Jesus had already died. And when he learned of it from the centurion, he gave the body to Joseph. Having brought a linen cloth, he took him down, wrapped him in the linen cloth, and laid him in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the entrance of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of Joseph, watched where he was laid. The Gospel of the Lord. So Holy Week 
is a time of deep reflection that is uh, meant to deepen our appreciation of the price our Lord Jesus paid for our salvation. Holy Week is not simply a reenactment of the events in the life of Jesus leading up to his passion and resurrection. It is a time of intense prayer as we reflect on his suffering and his victory over sin and death. Our salvation is a lived experience and not a past event that we annually remember or commemorate. It is a lived experience here and now. Yes, we were redeemed by Christ in time, but how are we living that redemption here and now? So to help us reflect on this, the church gives us the liturgies of Holy Week and encourages the faithful to try and participate fully in all the liturgies of this sacred week. And to help you plan for your participation during this Holy Week, we have in the bulletin this weekend our Holy Week and Easter schedule for you. So we really encourage everyone to please grab a copy of the bulletin after Mass because this is one of the weeks where you're actually going to really need the bulletin because it will help you to plan to know the times of the different liturgies during Holy Week. If you cannot get one, there is also the schedule available on the parish website. And so please, grab a cup, visit the website as well. And so this morning, I will briefly walk you through these liturgies that we are going to be celebrating during this Holy Week. And I won't go so much into the times and whatever, uh, because it is all listed for you in the, in, on the schedule. So I won't go so much on what time is this, what time is this. You can have that with you or visit the website, like I said. But I will walk you uh, through these liturgies. This will be a refresher for, uh, for some and maybe totally new information for others. And for this reason, my homily might go a little longer than usual. But if that happens and it becomes unbearable, offer it up, right? Offer it up. So first thing first, I'm sure we have all noticed that something is different in our church right now. The crosses, uh, the, cross, the statues, and the images have been veiled. Everybody, I'm sure you've noticed that from the fifth Sunday of Lent, we have some of our items here, they've been veiled. So from this fifth Sunday of Lent, which was the last Sunday, to the end of Good Friday service, all crosses remain covered. Images and statues remain covered until the beginning of the Easter Vigil on Holy Saturday. The veils immediately let us know that something is different. We are not accustomed to having our crosses and images and statues covered, so immediately when we see them, we know that something is different. These last two weeks of Lent are meant to be a time of immediate preparation, and the veils, we could say, forcefully remind us of this. Our senses are drawn away from these things we have become accustomed to, and we focus on something different. The beauty of the statues, the crosses, and the images, which we have become accustomed to, and maybe even take for granted sometimes, we mustn't forget that it was their beauty was a product of the passion, the suffering of our Lord Jesus Christ. So truly, what a better way of reminding us of this beauty than to have it veiled from us during these last two weeks of our Lenten season. Palm Sunday today, which marks the beginning of Holy Week, 
begins with a procession like we gathered in the gymnasium there. And this procession reminds us of our own journey to eternal life. Jesus Christ first made this journey on our behalf, and where he has gone before, we hope to follow. Just as he entered Jerusalem in a procession, with the people waving palm branches, symbols of peace and victory, we too receive these branches, praying that that peace of Christ and his victory over sin and death may fill our hearts as well. When the people were waving those branches and singing Hosanna in the highest, they thought the Messiah, the earthly Messiah they were waiting for, had finally come to establish his kingdom, to bring peace and to get rid of their oppressors. Similarly, you and I, we can look at that to say, he now comes into our hearts to set us free from all that keeps us under the bondage of sin and death. So Palm Sunday is both solemn and hopeful. It moves us from a triumphant entry into the city of David to that infamous death of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross. Palm Sunday prepares us for what lies ahead, even in our own lives. There will be moments of joy as the people were singing, Hosanna in the highest. We will experience moments of joy in our own lives. But as we know, there are also many trials and tribulation in our own lives. And so even these uh, 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 actions of Palm Sunday reminds us of that. So, however, there is victory for those who persevere to the end. There is life beyond Calvary. And that is what we also reflect on during Palm Sunday. The Wednesday of Holy Week is called Spy Wednesday. This is because this Wednesday onward, Judas Iscariot secretly watched for a chance to turn Jesus over or to hand Jesus over to the chief priests. So he spied on Jesus, and that is why we get that uh, uh, word to say we call it uh, Spy Wednesday. It is also called Silent Wednesday because the Gospels do not record any activities in the life of Jesus. All that they record is the secret meeting of Judas Iscariot with the chief priests. Thursday morning of Holy Thursday is or was traditionally when the Christmas Mass was celebrated. It is still the practice in some parts of the world, even in my own uh, home uh, archdiocese, the crazy mass is celebrated on the morning of Holy Thursday. But of course, in the bigger dioceses and archdioceses like ours, due to logistics and all kinds of things, they do not celebrate the crazy mass on Holy Thursday morning, but they move it to an earlier date. So it was last Thursday, that's when we had the crazy mass. At this mass, the bishop blesses the, oli the, the, the oils of the catechumen to be used in baptism and the oil of the sick that is used to anoint the ill and the infirmed. And he also consecrates the sacred chrism oil, which is used in the sacraments of confirmation and holy orders. The newly blessed oils are distributed to all parishes for the use or for use in the coming year. At this Mass, the crazy Mass also, priests recommit themselves to their priestly promises by renewing their ordination promises in the presence of their bishop. And then, of course, in the evening, the Holy Thursday Mass during Holy Week, which is also called the Mass of the Lord's Supper, it marks the beginning of the Easter Tridium. Tridium, which means three days, is a celebration of one long liturgy, which continues through Good Friday and ends on Holy Saturday. So the Tridium, it's not three separate liturgies, but one long liturgy, which takes three days to celebrate. 
for this reason, at the end of the Holy Thursday Mass or at the end of the Good Friday service, the deacon does not say, go forth in peace, the Mass is ended, because the Mass is not yet ended, right? It is one long liturgy that takes three days. And uh, it is worth noting also that during the Tridium, the Church suspends the celebration of baptisms, weddings, and funerals as well. And uh, so if you are planning to kick the bucket during this time, we won't put you into the earth until two weeks later. So stick around, okay? There's no funerals during this time. The only sacraments permitted during this time are the emergency anointings of the sick and the yatukum. Those are the only two that we celebrate. Holy Thursday Mass commemorates the institution of the sacraments of holy orders and the Eucharist. This Mass includes three special moments. The reception of those oils which are blessed at the Christian Mass, we receive them at the beginning of the Holy Thursday Mass. We also have the washing of the feet and the transfer of the Blessed Sacrament from the Church to the Chapel of Repose. After communion on Holy Thursday, the Church is transformed from presence to absence. And we can truly feel that absence of our Lord when the tabernacle is left empty, when it's swung open and the sanctuary light is extinguished. We truly experience a certain absence. We are not accustomed to having a, an empty tabernacle in our church. And then the altar is stripped of its linen and it is left bare until the Good Friday communion service. What follows after that Holy Thursday Mass are the events that happened after the Last Supper. It was a time of struggle, capture, and the illegal trial of our Lord Jesus Christ. And for this reason, just like he invited the disciples in the Garden of Gethsemane, the Lord invites us also to keep watch and to pray so that we do not undergo the test. It is for this reason when the blessed sacrament is transferred to the altar of repose, you are invited to stay and pray so that you may not undergo the test, as the Lord tells the disciples in Gethsemane. So from the brightness of the Last Supper, we enter the darkest nights ever known. Good Friday, we go into Good Friday, a day of prayer, lamentation, fasting, and abstinence. We have no Mass on Good Friday. That's why we don't say I'm going for the Good Friday Mass. There is no Mass on Good Friday. It is a service because the Blessed Sacrament is not consecrated. We use the Blessed Sacrament from the Holy Thursday Mass because, like I said, it is one long liturgy, right? So it is not a Mass. It's a service and we, we, because the Blessed Sacrament is not consecrated. On this day, we commemorate the Lord's real sacrifice on the cross. We are mystically present at Calvary with the Blessed Mother and the other disciples who remained at the cross with our Lord Jesus. The Good Friday service begins in silence. The priests and the deacons prostrate themselves on the floor here and the faithful kneel in silence. The prostration on the floor here is an act of humility and an expression of the profound grief and sorrow of the church for the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ. The Good Friday service contains three distinctive parts. The proclamation of the Passion narrative, like we did here not too long ago. We have the solemn intercessions which are more pronounced and more formal than we do on the regular Sundays as we pray for the world and all the peoples. And then we have the veneration of the cross, a reminder that just as Christ suffered, we too have been asked to bear our crosses diligently in this life and to carry them courageously. Finally, the service ends with the reception of Holy Communion, an expression of our union with Christ in his suffering. And then everybody departs in silence. 
And one thing also worth mentioning here, it's customary here at Our Lady Star of the Sea, that during uh, Good Friday, on Good Friday, we have confessions starting at noon until 3 p.m. This gives all the faithful an opportunity to be in a state of grace as you prepare to fulfill your obligation to receive communion on Easter. As you know, Catholics have an obligation to receive communion once a year on Easter. And that is why we are stuck in those confessionals for three hours, okay? So that you may all go to confession. Because there is no excuse, really, to either abstain from communion or to receive it in a state of sin on Good Friday uh, because uh, you are obliged to receive communion. And the worst thing you could ever do to yourself is that one day of the year <laughs> to abstain, if you don't have any impediments from the church, that is, or to receive it in a state of sin. No bueno. Don't do that to yourself, okay? Three hours of confession, it is for a reason, okay? Not that we enjoy sitting in there for three hours. I, I worry I'm going to get a blood clot or something sitting in there. So you better show up, okay? Make that blood clot worth it. Okay, And then during that, the deacons will lead the triore. This is the three hours of agony. This is when as the confessions are going on, we we'll have the triore liturgy here. This is the liturgy that reflects on a series of reflections on the uh, seven last words of Jesus on the cross. And of course, that will be followed by stations of the cross, and then later in the evening at 7 p.m., we will have our Good Friday service. Okay. So far, so good? Okay, we're almost there. The Easter Vigil, or Holy Saturday, begins at sunset. The church recommends that when we begin this liturgy, it is dark outside. It has four parts to it. The service of the light, that's when we gather outside, we bless the fire, and the Paschal candle that is lit from that same fire outside there. This is followed by a procession into the darkened church, which is symbolizing that a new light has come into the world, the light of Jesus Christ, Lumen Christi, the, deacon, the priest chants as he uh, processes in with the Paschal candle. And then this light, you all light your little candles there, and then there is light in the church, symbolizing that the darkness of sin and death is about to be conquered as our Lord Jesus, as we celebrate his resurrection on Easter. The exultant is chanted, repeating the words, this is the night, this is the night when the light of Christ has come. The liturgy of the word consists of nine readings, seven from the Old Testament and two from the New Testament. These readings lead us into a deeper contemplation on the mystery of our salvation. From the time of the creation of the world to this moment of the church gathered in prayer to the end of the world when all things will be brought to perfection, once and for all through the love of God. That is what those readings, those nine readings, as you read them, you're going to notice that they are progressing from the beginning of time to the present time until the end of time. Then the Gloria echoes in our churches once more, signifying that the Lenten season has finished. During the liturgy of baptism, Katkumens are baptized, confirmed, and they make their first communion, marking the completion of their sacraments of initiation. They are finally part of the body of Christ here in the church. And then, of course, in a state of grace, we receive our annual communion at the Easter Vigil. Or, those of you who attend Mass the following day on Easter Sunday, that communion at the Easter Vigil reminds us of the great gift of Christ's presence in our midst. After having completed his mission and returned to the Father, he continues to dwell in our midst in the Eucharist until he comes at the end of time to establish, 
to establish rather his kingdom on earth. And then finally, to send us forth to go and share the good news of the resurrection, the priest boldly proclaims that what was started on Thursday has finally come to a completion when he says, Go forth, the mass is ended, a word, a word. We do not say the A word during Lent, right? So stick around on the Easter video. You're going to know which word is that, okay? So I hope this information will be very helpful to you as you participate fully during the liturgies of Holy Week. I wish you all a blessed Holy Week. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. But the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess when baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our King has entered his city. Our palms and cries of homage fade away as the words of the gospel tell the story of his suffering and death. Let us bring our prayers to the Father through the Son he gave up for us with love beyond our comprehension. For the church, that in the face of adversity, it may always proclaim the name of Jesus and confess him Lord of all creation. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. For the peoples of all races and nations, may they come to know Jesus, the Prince of Peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. For the members of our parish, may we persevere in prayer, fasting, and almsgiving during Holy Week. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. For all who are to enter the church next weekend, May these final days of preparation bring an abundance of God's grace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. For Betty and Dorothy Blount, as they are baptized this morning, may they grow in the wisdom of the Holy Spirit. We pray to the Lord. Lord, we are prayer. 
For all who suffer from illness, may they unite their suffering with that of Christ with special reverence and devotion this week, and so find in Christ the way of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, the our prayer. And for all those who have died, especially Gerald D. Giovanni, may they be led by the cross from the land of death into eternal life. We pray to the Lord. Lord, the our prayer. Lord and Father, with a serene courage, your son went forth to die for us. Grant us a share in his strength as we bring these prayers before you through Christ our Lord.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Through the passion of your only begotten Son, O Lord, may our reconciliation with you be near at hand, so that though we do not merit it by our own deeds, yet by this sacrifice made once for all, we may feel already the effects of your mercy. The Lord be with you. up your heart. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For though innocent, he suffered willingly for sinners and accepted an unjust condemnation to save the guilty. His death has washed away our sins and his resurrection has purchased our justification. And so with all the angels, we praise you as in joyful celebration, we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our lord jesus christ by the power and working of the holy spirit you give life to all things and make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium of Fidei Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and the blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O oh Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Paul, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, or the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There, we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, O glory and honor is yours, Forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, how Lord be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from our distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. 
The peace of the Lord be with you always. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Thank you. 